Hi loves and welcome back to my channel. Today we're getting into a review of my Chloe Faye backpack. Sorry, I know the hardware is a tiny bit loud. The bag I've had for a few years now, so I wanted to give you a wear and tear over time. I don't know that they're still doing this style in store, but I know you can get them pre-loved if you like it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Morgan. I make videos about luxury handbags, fashion, and lifestyle, so if that's your thing, please subscribe and turn on notifications. I want to get into a detailed review of this bag today with the features, what fits inside, pros and cons, mod shots, and my buying advice. So let's get into it. Start with the features of the bag. This bag is a very versatile bag. It comes with a detachable strap. This is really great for wearing it on your shoulder. I'm not a backpack person, and when I saw how this strap looked, I saw a girl wearing it, I was like, I could see myself buying this backpack and I'm so glad I did. Also has a leather strap that has this like push pin um, kind of adjustable button. You can remove the straps. It's very, very difficult. You have to slide these down first, open this up, take it off, and then it just clamps here. I like to wear it usually like this with the straps hanging off of it. The hardware on the front is a mix of gold and silver. It's so light you can hardly tell the difference. You have these little zipper expanders. There's suede lining here in these areas. The flap is a suede. It's very delicate and very impressionable as well. So you can see some of this wear over time. It's got marks. I need to try to give it a good clean. Chloe suede is notoriously difficult to clean without ruining it. I've just kind of let it have that like weathered look. It's a bag I feel I'm always gonna have in my collection so I don't mind it having a little bit of like wear and marks on the flap itself. One thing to note about the outside of this bag is that over time you do get this sagging. When I store it, I stuff it completely full of dust bags so it fills out the bottom. But even still over time you get this like sagging with like use and just like setting it down on the table when you're using it day to day. So that will happen. Something you can do for storage to help with that issue is you could put this on a purse hanger and hang it stuffed rather than keeping it sitting on a shelf. I don't mind. Chloe bags are some of the few bags that I enjoy having more wear on them over time because they have that kind of like boho, a little bit of a vintage feel. When they get these kind of creases and marks on them, I feel like it gives it more of a history and a story to it. So I kind of like that. It says Chloe here on the flap. You can hardly see it if you brush the suede in different directions it becomes more or less visible. It has a magnetic button closure which I find to be pretty easy to get in and out of. On the inside it's lined in this beige fabric and it has some leather detailing. You have one zip back pocket and you have one very deep front open pocket. You can see a bit of like the dirt and the marks in here but I think it's held up relatively well over time. I'm typically quite careful in a bag like this. If I'm going to have makeup with me or any kind of liquid. I make sure it's inside of a pouch and then I put it in this bag. I've been a tiny bit careful with it so the wear is not too bad on the inside. R, I don't think you're going to be able to see it because it's down in this very bottom corner. There's a few pin marks in here. On the bottom it's just this like flat bottom. Even though it has a little bit of like the structure wear, it's kind of meant to be this like squishy bag. So. It's not bulging down or anything like that. I think it looks pretty good considering how much I've used it. So I don't think the wear and tear on the bottom is really that bad at all considering I've put this under the seat in front of me when flying and it's just, you know, it's one of those bags I'm not too precious with and it's held up really well over time. Let's get into the pros and cons of this bag. The pros to this bag is that it is probably the most versatile bag I have in my collection. Not even being a backpack person, I really use this quite a bit because of the shoulder strap that is additional to it. And it's one of the very few designer backpacks where I enjoy wearing this as a shoulder bag and I think it looks just as nice as a shoulder bag, if not better, than it does as a backpack. So it's one of those bags that if you want a backpack and you're not a backpack person, generally in terms of the types of bags you normally wear day to day. This is one that doesn't feel like a backpack when you use it, but you have that added versatility that if you wanna sling it over your shoulder and wear it on your back, you can. And I really like that about this bag. Second pro to this bag, the little zipper sides here. It really helps you expand the bag and hold more if you want to. Or you can have this kind of zipped up look as well, so it's a little more chic and sleek. 
So this gives you, again, just more versatility. I think Chloe really thought about the versatility of this bag because the third pro is also the mixed metal. No matter if you're a gold or a silver person, like in terms of the jewelry that you wear, this bag will go with any wardrobe because you have both options in the hardware. It's a very easy bag to match with, you know, any belt hardware you have or, you know, necklace that you're wearing. Everything kind of goes with this bag very easily. Another pro to this bag is that it's considerably lightweight for a leather backpack. When you hold some of these other designer like leather backpacks, like even the Chanel one, it's quite a heavy bag for the size and what you can fit in it. This one, I feel that the leather that they chose for it is very lightweight. It is still leather, it's not like having, you know, just a canvas backpack like what you would have in school as a kid. That's definitely gonna be more lightweight because there's just no leather to it at all. But considering the fact that you can remove these straps, you can also remove a lot of the weight of it as well if you're gonna carry it mostly as a shoulder bag. Another pro to this bag is that it fits all the daily essentials and it's pretty well priced for the size of the bag. I believe this bag was around 2,000 retail, but you can definitely get one between 12 and 1,400 pre-loved. So for that price and the size of the bag in terms of designer bags today, I think that's a really fair price for the amount of items that this holds. And now for the cons of the bag. One is that this suede is so delicate. And you'll typically see that kind of wear on pre-loved ones on the websites. It's very rare you'll find one of the flaps in suede that are completely clean. That is mostly due to the fact that when you open this, this is typically what ends up happening. When you touch this area so much, it's bound to get this kind of mark here around the logo. It's probably best if you grab it from here and try to open it, but I find it's much easier to like pull it open like this because the magnet is quite strong. It's very difficult to clean. If you don't know, Chloe uses a special kind of suede that you can't use with every type of suede cleaner, otherwise it can ruin it. So be very careful about what materials you use to clean this suede. If you like your bag to be 100% perfect, this is not gonna be the one for you. It does show wear over time. Another con to this bag is the light colored lining. It's good for being able to see your stuff, but I would have liked to have seen maybe like a light gray or something like that inside because it just shows like specks of dust and like little things a lot less. I feel like beige lining is just one of those that it just shows every single mark if you do get something on there. Another con to this bag has to do more with the brand than the bag itself, and that's that Chloe doesn't keep their styles around. If you're going to buy this bag, it really has to be because you know you're gonna use it and love it like how I did, because I got so much use out of this, especially when I was traveling more often. It's such a great versatile travel bag, but the thing is, is Chloe changes their styles. Like every six months, there's a new style. They discontinue old styles, usually after maybe two, maximum three years of making the style. If you're gonna buy a Chloe bag, I really recommend that it be your particular style and that you know it's gonna work really well for what you want in your wardrobe. This is not a classic bag. This is more of like a trend bag. I do think that because Chloe has a bit of a vintage feel to its style and how it wears over time, that it looks really nice even if it's not the current it style from Chloe. Another con to this bag is the style. Chloe bags tend to lean a little more boho-ish in their styling. I feel like Chloe really works in very specific wardrobes. For me, it works in a section of my wardrobe. It works with more of those like, I can wear it with like white summer dresses, with sandals, or I can wear it in my winter wardrobe when I'm wearing denim and darker colors. It doesn't really work with like my colorful dresses. If you have a neutral wardrobe, it works great, but if you have a light colored wardrobe, maybe a beige or a pink version would look a little bit better and be easier to match for your wardrobe. Another con to this bag is that it does sag over time and you're gonna get these folds. It doesn't bother me. I like this kind of lived-in look with Chloe bags. If this was a Chanel backpack, I would be like beside myself because it had creases at the bottom. But because this style is such a way where it feels slouchy and it feels vintagey, these kind of folds almost add to the character of the bag. But I know some people would not like that with their bags, so I'm putting it as a con. Another con to the bag is this. 
it can be very loud. I really don't have an issue with it. And if you do remove these extra straps back here, it reduces the noise greatly. But if you're going to keep all the straps on it like I do, it is noisy, it does happen. So it's something just to be aware of that if you want your bags like perfectly quiet, definitely not the bag for you. Let's get into what fits inside. Now I have packed this completely full and I wanted to show you like how much you can really fit. I don't normally carry this much stuff with me. So when I wear it, it has a bit of a more like slouchy look to it. So I'll just remove the two big items first and kind of show you how it typically is packed for me. This is what it looks like inside. I have my iPad Pro, I think it is. It's the one you can draw on. I don't know what model this is, but it's one of the kind of bigger ones as you can see. If I put my hand here, you can see it's kind of big. So that fits inside. I also have my like moleskin notebook. This is their kind of like standard size and it fits inside just fine. So if you have a day planner or a notebook you take with you, it's easily going to fit in this bag. If it's a little bit more usually around this range for me. I usually don't have that stuff. As you can see, there's still like the folding in the corners, but it just has a nice squishier look. This is what it looks like about how full I typically pack it. You can fit a 500 ml water bottle in here. I have my mini pochette, my wallet. It's the thin zippy one. My iPhone 12 Max Pro, a sunglass case with sunglasses inside. Then this pocket is super useful in the front. It actually hold as much as some of my like little nano tiny bags. So I have my house key on a little strap, a pen for the notebook, hand sanitizer, my car key, a liquid lipstick, and like a Listerine breath spray. I would typically just use this back pocket for like feminine products. I don't really need like a whole nother pocket. There's just like so much space in this bag. But that is everything that really fits inside comfortably. So this is a great daily use style. It can hold so many essentials, plus like if you're traveling as a backpack, it's nice to have a small water bottle with you as well. Now it's time for my buying advice, and this one's gonna be pretty quick, because I'm pretty sure this style is discontinued now. Um, maybe you can find it at like outlet stores, that would be a good way to buy it, but pre-loved is the way to go. Toy bags do not hold their value. Maybe for the first six months when the bag is released, it's gonna be the same price pre-loved, but give it a year, give it two years, and it's gonna be like half the price of the retail price. So this one definitely go pre-loved. I see the prices for good conditions around 1200 to 1400, that kind of range. I believe the bag was somewhere between 1800 to 2000 new, I think, maybe a little more or less, I'm not sure. Something in a condition like mine where it's got the sagging and a bit of marks, you can even get for around 1000. This is a bag that you can definitely get a good deal on and I think it's really worth it pre-loved if you think this bag is gonna work well for your wardrobe. And I also wanna say this is a bag that I only recommend buying if it works for you and your wardrobe. It's not considered a classic bag by any means. And because Chloe changes their styles, people might say it's like out of fashion, but I kind of feel like because Chloe changes it so much, they always have like a Chloe element. It's still a nice bag that you can still wear. And for people who are not up on every single style that Chloe is doing, they might not know that it's not in production anymore. Still wear mine, I still love mine, and it makes a great travel bag. My favorite way to wear this bag is on the shoulder, hands down. It's honestly the reason I bought this bag. So hold the shoulder strap, and it does get quite low to the ground, but it still doesn't drag the ground for me. For reference, I'm five foot six inches tall, and I wear a US size six, a UK size 10. You can also wear this bag as a backpack, of course. That's what it's designed to be worn as. I like to sling it over one shoulder. I think that's a really casual way to wear a backpack and probably more functional for me in my life. I don't really go so many places where I need to wear a backpack with two straps on it, but you can wear it with two straps. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this review informative. I'd love to know in the comments if you're into designer backpacks. I know they're kind of a polarizing style. Some people love them, some people hate them. I never thought I would be one to own a designer backpack, but this one really works. So let me know what you think about designer backpacks, if they really work for your lifestyle and how you use them in your day-to-day -day life. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram to see how I style my bags and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.